Hey students, this uh, this part will be really short because this is about the Japanese attack on uh, Pearl Harbor and kind of why I did uh, the Japanese end up um, doing a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. So uh, I kind of want to start this part looking at this uh, uh, political cartoon. This is showing these different uh, treaties and promises and so forth that uh, Japan had signed, the U.S. had signed and so forth, and Japan just blew right on through it with um, the attack on December 7, 1941. It's uh, one of the most uh, impactful days in American history for, uh, for sure. And really what 9-11 uh, what did to my generation, World War II, our, uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor that started World War II for the U.S. Was, was that times about three in its overall involvement. So 1941, we covered this at the end of the last uh, lecture, is uh, Hitler is going to invade the Soviet Union. He decides to postpone uh, Operation Sea Line uh, temporarily, but he actually never even goes through with it uh, because he invaded the Soviet Union um, to capture their, their vast oil fields in June of 1941. Um, Japan had invaded Manchuria in 1931 and then also invaded the rest of China in 1937. Even though the United States is isolated, um, the United States did put some trade embargoes uh, on Japan by trying to trying to prevent them from getting oil, rubber, metal products, and so forth. So that way, um, it might encourage them to to uh, stop the war with China. Um, as I showed you at the end of the last lecture, you know the United States did not favor going to war, um, but by uh, as time goes along in 1941, more and more Americans favored uh, going to war because what was happening with Germany and Europe, and uh, and then also the Japanese in Asia. But why did the United States get attacked by Japan? Japan felt like um, that they had kind of um, had some had some tensions with the U.S. from the early 1900s. Uh, um, if you remember in the American Expansion lecture, I mentioned that Teddy Roosevelt predicted that the United States would, would end up fighting war with Japan, which he was right. Um, Japan is wanting to become economically self-sufficient, so they invade China, which has throughout history been one of the most resource-rich countries uh, in the world and one of the most economic Power, biggest power players in world history. Although at this time, the late day turns early 1900s, uh, China's at its weakest point in world history. And so um, the United States is interfering economically with Japan being able to create this overseas empire when they invaded uh, China. Also, Japan created an alliance with Germany and Italy as well in 1941. And so Japan kind of with their military government by the end of the 1930s had fully taken control of the government they felt like if they hit the United States hard enough in the nose, the United States would fall down and uh, basically kind of sue for peace and let Japan do what they will in the Pacific. Uh, but instead, it actually, it does knock us down if they punch us in the nose, but instead of us giving in, the United States ends up getting up angry and probably some of the most motivated and angry the United States ever been uh, towards a foreign nation in world history, or at least in American history. So um, one of the things is, is that there was, Competing areas for these island networks, you can see right uh, um, here. Also, the United States controlled the Philippines. And so by this point of 1941, Japan has taken this area. Okay, They invaded Manchuria in 1931, invaded this part of China in 1937. China is such a vast nation, they can't really control all of it. Um, they're not the Mongols and they're not the Manchus in world history who actually conquered all of China. Um, also, Right in this region of the world is going to be some very resource rich areas. You've got oil, you've got rubber, you've got iron ore um, and some other minerals that uh, the Japanese are going to want for their industrial society and so forth. So not only does the United States get attacked at Pearl Harbor, uh, the United States is also going to get attacked at the Philippines and Britain and France are going to get attacked here. Now, one of the reasons why um, France gets attacked is when they get attacked by Germany in 1940, Japan capitalizes and they invade French Indochina as well to kind of uh, fill the power vacuum with the French getting defeated by the Germans. They're also with the British kind of uh, licking its wounds, they're going to attack part of um, India and Burma uh, and Malaysia as well. Um, and so this is kind of a forgotten theater of World War II. In fact, we had American troops. I actually interviewed a, a couple guys that fought in Burma. Um, and flew flew planes uh, when I did uh, research papers in graduate school. So, but this is an area where um, the United States fought in as well to reclaim Burma, which is now present day Myanmar from the Japanese. Uh, the Dutch also get attacked. In fact, the Japanese said that they kind of fought the ABCD, Americans, British, 
Chinese and the Dutch. They also fought the French, but the French were kind of defeated easily because of what happened with Germany. So um, the goal is, is that Japan um, had developed a technology. Uh, if you ever seen the movie Pearl Harbor, that uh, 40 something minute battle scene was, was pretty accurate. They developed a, 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 a torpedo that could be dropped from a plane that had a rudder that made it stay close to the water surface so it could nail um, a boat fairly easily. And so what happens is um, they had been sent that they're going to stay peaceful with the United States, sending messages. Meanwhile, their Navy is going undetected across the Pacific. Um, and so they were hoping to knock out our Pacific fleet. Now, they really would have had the United States aircraft carriers of the Pacific fleet been there. Thankfully, they were out uh, in the ocean doing some uh, uh, practice maneuvers um, because if the Japanese would have knocked out our aircraft carriers, which was their number one priority when they attacked Pearl Harbor and then the battleships were number two, it would have been towards the middle to the end of 1943 before we could have effectively fought the Japanese, uh, even remotely tried to compete with them. It wouldn't have had very important battles um, that took place in 1942, um, such as Guadalcanal, Battle of Coral Sea, and the Battle of Midway. Uh, the Battle of Midway is, is one of the biggest victories in American history, period. So uh, thankfully they were not there. And that's kind of leads to conspiracy theorists thinking that, oh, FDR knew the Japanese were going to attack. That's why he pulled the aircraft carriers out. He was hoping to draw us into the war. And if we were attacked, that would motivate the American public. I wrote a research paper in college on, on, on the attack on Pearl Harbor. Uh, there's really not any sound evidence. Um, we did break the Japanese code. And we did figure out that they were going to attack us within a couple of days before the attack. We had no idea that they could get all the way to Pearl Harbor. We were, I guess, naive, arrogant what or whatnot, but we were foolish to think that they couldn't get all the way to Pearl Harbor undetected because they actually did. We thought they were going to hit us in, in uh, the Philippines or Guam um, or Wake Island or something like that, which they actually do just after they attack us at Pearl Harbor. We, we kind of figured that with about a day or two before the attack on Pearl Harbor. In fact, the message that the United States Navy sent to Pearl Harbor warning them of a possible attack, the attack was actually already going on. So um, the attack is planned by Admiral Yamamoto, and um, who's in charge of the Navy. And then Captain Mutsu, uh, Fuchida is going to be in charge of the Japanese Air Force that attack. So their targets are the aircraft carriers, which they weren't there. The battleships is number two target. They also went for smaller ships, and then they were going to attack the naval airfields that protected Pearl Harbor to try to destroy as many planes as they possibly could. So about 353 Japanese aircraft um, descended on, um, on uh, the, the naval base of Pearl Harbor. They hit us early on a Sunday morning. The Japanese had definitely done their, their due diligence and research because typically in the United States military, Sunday mornings – is a time that um, you usually not mess with too much. Like even if you're in basic training, usually they give you a few hours off to either go to religious services if you choose, or you can just sleep in. And so you had very many, a minimal amount of troops on duty. Uh, in fact, when the, the United States radar was picking up uh, uh, planes coming in, they actually thought it was um, ships or, or planes coming in from the mainland or a flock of birds. They didn't realize that it was um, the entire Japanese Air Force coming and hitting us. Um, and so they attacked right, um, right after um, daybreak so they could see when a lot of Americans were either at uh, a religious service or sleeping it off from the night before. And so um, what ends up happening is the attack um, is highly effective. Um, they destroy a, about 150 planes or so over the course of a little less than two hours. Uh, just over 2,000 servicemen are killed and 1,100 uh, more are wounded. And uh, it, is, it is devastating. And um, um, thankfully, about half of our Pacific fleet was not there, including a couple other battleships. But the United States was only able to shoot down about 29 Japanese aircraft. So these are the ships that were docked there. Uh, my parents have been to the memorial over the USS Arizona, which I'll explain in just a minute. Sorry, my slides here are messing up. So this is what uh, Pearl Harbor looked like and what where the ships were docked and so forth. And this was where they hit. Um, this is FDR signing the um, Declaration of War, where he gave his famous speech, a day that forever live in infamy, the Empire of Japan subtly and deliberately attacked the United States. In fact, my fraternity that I was a member of in college was founded the day after Pearl Harbor uh, and so forth. And uh, this is explosions and so forth. This is the Arizona going down. Uh, what's, what's really tragic, the Arizona was the biggest battleship that went down. Not only does it go down by a torpedo hit, some other bombs, 
it flips over. And so when you go to the Pearl, Pearl Harbor Memorial, you take a little boat out to the little white um, area that, that's sitting on top of the Arizona, and you can actually see the Arizona about 10 feet down the water. It still leaks oil to this day. And this is um, something that I think should make you proud to be an American because this is a very expensive thing to do. But uh, for Pearl Harbor veterans, particularly those that survived the USS Arizona, because most of the men inside the ship when it flipped over drowned, um, and they were not able to rescue them in time. Um, a lot of the men were, were killed in the water as they were trying to swim away by a Japanese machine gun fire. Um, some servicemen couldn't even swim. Now, of course, today in the United States Navy, everybody's required to be able to swim uh, to be in the Navy. But what, what ends up happening is, uh, this was several years ago when I read this, but this is so cool. Uh, since the USS Arizona was sunk, there have been 19 survivors of the USS Arizona that have requested for the United States Navy to bury them with their shipmates. The United States Navy has honored that request and gone down there with the, with welders, opened up the ship after their, their, um, these men are deceased and bury them with their shipmates. That's a very expensive thing to do as a nice uh, gesture for veterans. Um, there, I don't think there's a country in the world that, that spends that kind of money when they certainly don't have to for on behalf of veterans. So that that's pretty cool. Um, so anyway, Pearl Harbor is what's going to lead to tremendous propaganda against the Japanese. The United States across the country is just pissed off. Um, you had uh, even kids cartoons that were getting them to hate the Japanese, um, uh, old people, middle aged and so forth. Hey, the Japanese, all of the veterans I interviewed that fought in the Pacific hated the Japanese. One guy who dropped napalm on um, the Japanese forces in Burma was laughing, telling me about it when I was, I was interviewing him. And in fact, his wife was going on about how much she hated the Japanese. This was years ago, but still, um, my brother-in-law's, um, grandfather was a, uh, uh, Pacific War veteran and owned a transmission shop in Palm Bluff, Arkansas, and refused to work on any Japanese-made vehicles, Honda, Toyota, or Nissan, throughout his entire life because he had fought in the Pacific. So the hatred was real. The Japanese hated the Americans. Americans hated the Japanese. Uh, it was mutual across the board. Now, what ends up happening, it, it, it seems like it was a foolish thing. It also seems like it wouldn't make that big of a difference. But uh, FDR said, you know what, we got to hit the Japanese. Because right after Pearl Harbor, Japan ends up attacking the Philippines, and they they really mop the floor with us. They um, surround our forces at the Bataan Peninsula. Um, they are, uh, American forces are forced to surrender. And from there, they are forced march uh, to camp, um, to a, a prisoner of war camp, where anybody that fell behind was shot or beheaded with a, a sword, um, and where these men are going to be tortured, uh, beaten, and starved. Uh, many of them starved to death until they're liberated at the end of the war. Um, and so the Bataan Death March was horrific. We had been whipped at Guam, whipped at Wake uh, Island and so forth, and Australia was getting threatened. And so FDR said, you know what, we got to bomb Japan. And the United States Navy said, you know, Mr. President, if we do, we're going to put our aircraft carriers at risk. We can't provide them protection to get all the way close enough to the Japanese mainland to bomb them, not to mention our bombers don't have enough uh, uh, takeoff space on a, on a, on an aircraft carrier to be able to even take off to bomb them. And FDR was like, I don't care, find a way. Uh, we have got to send them a message that we're coming because we needed a morale boost in our country because the first six months of the war, Japan just mopped the floor with us. Uh, we couldn't beat them once. Uh, and so what ends up happening is they were figure out a way to strip down the bombers. Um, and they sent a couple aircraft carriers and they were actually going to get closer to the Japanese mainland and then turn around, but a Japanese fishing vessel spots them. So they're, they're, the uh, planes are have to take off sooner. It's led by our Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle. And so what ends up happening is these B-25 bombers take off early. And the plan was is to bomb Japan, fly over into either the Soviet Union or China behind the Japanese lines and get rescued. And then they were gonna be sent back home. What ends up happening is because they have to take off early, they do bomb Tokyo. It doesn't do much damage to Tokyo, but what ends up happening is it kind of freaks out the Japanese military government. Now, some of the planes um, are crash landing in the Japanese controlled area of China. Uh, some of them are killed. Some are captured. Some are executed for the attempted murder on the emperor in their minds. They weren't even considered prisoners of war um, and so forth. Some uh, like Lieutenant Colonel Jimmy Doolittle were able to make it to the Soviet Union and escape and uh, so forth. He has later issued the Medal of Honor 
for leading that raid and uh, escaping to the Soviet Union. And what ends up happening is it freaks out the Japanese military government. And they're basically like, well, crud, we have to prevent another American bombing attack because they could have killed the emperor. And so what ends up happening is that's what leads to Japan's Navy deciding that they were going to invade Hawaii. And because the United States had broken their, um, uh, their coding abilities, we knew that they were coming and we set up an ambush at the Battle of Midway. And at the Battle of Midway was a turning point in the war in the, uh, for the war in the Pacific and one of the greatest uh, victories in American history. And it's going to lead the United States to eventually turn the tide in the war in the Pacific and then slowly recapturing territory against the Japanese all the way until um, August of 1945. So I will come to that when I get to the war in the Pacific in a later lecture. This is a picture taken for the raid over Tokyo with the Doolittle Raid. Um, yeah, a lot of them were, they were captured, were shot by a firing squad. Eventually four were rescued by um, the OSS, Office of Strategic Services in 1945. It's kind of the precursor to the CIA. Um, everybody that went on this raid re received the Distinguished Flying Cross. It's pretty cool. Some received silver stars for their valor, and particularly when um, they pr protected their, their fellow um, uh, comrades. And um, uh, Doolittle received the Medal of Honor. In fact, he gets promoted from um, to a brigadier general. He skipped the rank of colonel because he was so famous uh, in American society. And we will get to the home front in the next part.